The dot product is an important operation in mathematics. It takes in two vectors and spits out a number. There's a property of the dot product, however, that is often taken for granted. And in this video, I want to prove why it's true so that it makes sense, it seems uh, concrete. But before we do that, we should understand what the dot product is. So the definition of the dot product is that given two vectors, so you have u and v, they'll have n different components, which means they'll have an x component, a y component, and then they'll have a whole host of other components until you come to the nth component of the vector. And then the other vector will have the exact same thing, except it's called v, so I should write it as such. So it'll have the x, the y, and then because they have n components, it'll also have uh, n, n dimensions, so it'll have n components. So the definition of the dot product is that u dot v, written as u with a big dot in the middle, v, this is equal to the magnitude of u, which is like saying the length. So if you had a velocity vector, it would be the speed, for example, would be the magnitude. That's written with two bars. So it's the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. When I say the cosine of the angle between them, what I mean is that if this here is v and this is u, the angle between them is this right here, theta. This is the definition of the dot product, uh, but there is an alternate definition, an alternate way to calculate the dot product that many students learn oftentimes before they even learn the formal definition of the dot product, and that is the dot product theorem. Dot product theorem. And what the dot product theorem says is that u dotted with v equals and then multiplying and summing their different products. So you have the x component of u times the x component of v plus the y component of u times the y component of v plus and then all the other multiplications, the z's, the n's, the whatever's um, and then yes coming to the the nth term whatever it may be uh, un times vn. This summation here this is equal to the dot product, this, this multiplication of magnitudes. Why is that so? Well, interestingly enough, the law of cosines is the key to connecting the definition of the dot product and the dot product theorem. A quick refresher on what the law of cosines is. The law of cosines says that it, it's a way of using trigonometry on a triangle that isn't doesn't have a 90 degree angle. So if we were to draw some sort of uh, triangle, there's no 90 degree angle here. It's just a regular old triangle. And most triangles out in the wilderness of mathematics aren't actually right triangles, so this is really useful. You have some sides A, B, and C. And for any given side, you can say, if you know the angle on the opposite side. So if we're, if we're doing this for C, we want the opposite angle to the side of C, which is going to be this angle. We call it something like theta. The law of cosines states here that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and then because it's not a right triangle, minus 2A times B times the cosine of that opposite angle theta. Just one quick thing to point out here, if cosine, if theta was 90 degrees, the cosine of theta would be zero, so this minus 2ab cosine theta term would go away, which is why if one of the sides is 90 degrees, if it's a right triangle, a squared plus b squared will equal c squared, is because this term disappears. Just an interesting tidbit. But what we should do now is use the law of cosines on u and v, our vectors. So let's draw out a nice big triangle here. And what we can do is we can say that some of these lines are going to be either A or B. Uh, U or V, sorry. <laughs> so let's say this top one here, this is U. The bottom one is V. And what is this here going to be? This final vector, this final side? Well, 
you can you can define a vector as the tip of the vector minus the tail of the vector. So we can say the tip is out here u, and the tail is v. So u minus v defines this vector here going up f up from here with a straight line, up from here like that. That's u minus v. And this is a triangle, and we're not going to define it by the actual vectors. We're going to define it by the lengths these vectors have. So let's use the double bars to signify magnitude or length of these. So now we can use this triangle to make our equation. So u minus v is c, so we have that the magnitude of u minus v squared is going to equal magnitude of u plus the magnitude of v minus 2, and then this is that, that special term for the law of cosines, 2 times a times b, which is in this case 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. And now we have this equation. It's pretty cool. One thing that we can notice here is on this side right here, hey, this is the dot product of u and v. And well, we're trying to show that this dot product is equal to something. So it might be in our best interest to isolate it out. The easiest way to do that would be to add two of it to both sides, because we have multiplying by two, and then subtract out this uh, u minus v squared term. And what we get then is we're adding two of it. So we're getting two times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. And we're subtracting this off. So after we have the magnitude of u plus the magnitude of v, we're going to subtract the magnitude of u minus v. And these are all squared. Must mess that up there. So once we have this, we can just divide by 2. And we see here that we're going to have u dotted with v equals the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus the magnitude of u minus v squared all divided by 2. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Let's scroll down a little bit here to make ourselves some room. And now let's try to evaluate this expression and simplify it down to prove the connection between the dot product theorem and the definition of the dot product. So first thing, just we'll rewrite this side here. So u dot v. And then we have this magnitude of u, magnitude of v, magnitude of u minus v. That involves a square root. But what's good about this is that they're squared. So even though there's a square root under there, it's all getting squared. So this is going to be simplified, right? So what we're going to get is where this would normally be the square root of ux squared plus uy squared plus uz squared, on and on and on. Now this is just those those coordinate those components squared. So we're going to get that this is just u of x squared plus u of y squared plus dot 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 all the way up to u of n squared. Um, we're going to have this without the square root because we're squaring it already. And to this we're going to add the square of all of these components all the way up to this nth component of v. And here, though, we're going to subtract. Again, this is a squared magnitude. So this is going to be the x component of u minus the y component of v squared. And then we're going to subtract the y component of u minus the y component of v squared. And you can imagine, I'm just going to continue it off here. Uh, and then you're going to subtract all of the components here until you get to the nth component of u minus the nth component of v squared. So, and now we get the full breadth of the screen. So I'm going to be able to write this out nice and large without size constrictions. So, and this is all getting divided by 2 here. So what we can do is we can just rewrite and then what we're going to see is there are a lot of things that cancel. This is the longest form of the equation. It's going to get really small really quickly now. So the first thing 
that I want us to notice is that when we have this ux minus vx, whenever we have this type of a term, u of x minus v of x squared, this is going to equal u of x squared minus 2u of x v of x plus v of x squared. I should probably get on doing my uh, vector arrows here. Uh, this means we can turn all of these types of terms into this form. But what's good about this form is we have to remember we're subtracting all of these. If we're subtracting all of these, that means all the terms go negative. So we have negative, negative, and then this here turns into a minus. And one more time, we remember that earlier in the equation, we're subtracting things like u of x squared. Sorry, we're adding them. So if we're subtracting them now, they're all going to cancel out. And we're subtracting v of x squareds. And here we have the v of x squareds. And for the term where u of y minus v of y squared has the y's, that's again going to cancel out these y's for the u and the v. And that's going to happen for every term until finally, at the last term, we cancel out the final term. So that also cancels these out and means that the expression as a whole is going to just have this plus 2u of x v of x term for each of these components. So. That means we're going to have 2 times u of x times v of x plus 2 times u of y v of y plus, and then all of those terms for all n components, plus 2 times the nth u uh, times the nth v. And I should really remember my vector arrows. Yes. And then we're going to divide this all by 2. And it's pretty amazing. We went from this huge equation to seeing, wow, by expanding, we can simplify, we can cancel here. All of these twos go away because we're dividing by two. And in the end, this brings us to the final equation, which is that the dot product between u and v equals the multiplication of their components straight out of the law of cosines. It's pretty cool. And that concludes this proof. It's one of the most amazing proofs in math. It's so simple, but also so elegant. And it wouldn't be too easy to find, because you have to think about it. So with that, I hope it helps you understand, and hope you found it cool.